Hey everyone, this is Paul Tamayo for Kotaku.com, and today I'm bringing to you a gameplay demo that me and my colleague Gita Jackson got a chance to check out at Ubisoft earlier today. So we got a chance to play Ghost Recon Breakpoint, at least an E3 demo build of it, and uh, this is sort of uh, a quick look at um, just one small mission. We got a chance to partake in a few of them, but we had some technical difficulties. Uh, this is an early build, so um, you know there were some bugs and things along the way. But uh, this is a good sort of section just to give you an idea of a little bit of the mix of the little bit of the reconnaissance the recon part of the ghost recon <laughs> and um it's just a little bit of the gunplay too and, and and sort of the foes you'll be encountering so uh we got a chance to play with uh and an, uh, another person and then uh, also someone from the dev team who was sort of leading the way so here you see me uh switching between binoculars and now into the uh little drone that i can sort of move around uh, just to kind of move around this base where we need to eventually infiltrate and make contact with our, uh, with our, you know, the person we're trying to save here. Hit a couple trees there, but you know, those, those trees came out of nowhere. So um, you'll see here, I'm just kind of moving around, marking civilians and enemies alike, just so we know what, get, just to get a lay of the land. That little circle there is where we need to go. So that that's exactly where uh, their name there, Paula Madera, that's where we have to go find her. And uh, also, this little shout out to my Incubus fans out there. <laughs> There's a drone in the game. Uh, this is a little sort of robot, a robot drone that do, that kind of does patrols. So in this game, in addition to obvious uh, humanoid enemies that you'll be encountering, you're also going to be fighting against some some uh, some robots some robots as it were and it's kind of cool actually you'll get a chance to see what it looks like in a second but uh, a lot of that ghost recon slow methodical movement is still here uh, so you'll see here um, uh, what's our guy's name uh, fury uh, actually i am playing as fury here and uh gita was playing as fix it and i'll be switching back and forth from uh, certain angles so you can get a chance to see what it looks like from both point points of view so here i kind of go into a uh, prone stance and limit the visibility that the enemies have on me and uh if you crouch into the bushes too of course it's uh you know Kind of a common video game staple by now you will also limit your visibility and they won't be able to see you as easily so you'll see that we'll be moving towards the base a little slowly but surely and along the way as because we're on the main roads here we'll encounter a couple of uh, cars that'll pass by with some enemy with some enemies on them so we have to kind of watch our back keep our head on a swivel and all that good stuff um so this is a kind of a cool segment here that you'll get a chance to take a look at. So my character that I was playing as, uh, Fury, that's that's her name, um, her class is the Panther class. So um, that means I'm a little bit more stealthy. Something's in my arsenal and my abilities um, sort of obviously align with that sort of style of play. And Gita, who's playing as Fixit, uh, I believe is more of the like sort of techie engineer class. And um, you'll see at this moment in particular, we're, we're kind of fumbling with the controls trying to figure out how to select uh, the thing that we're trying to select in order to breach the the fence here. So the breach torch, you'll see here, uh, Gita will sort of equip it and then she'll go to the fence. And what she's going to do is get close enough to a, a vulnerable part of the fence like this part right here. And uh, there will be a little button prompt that'll pop up. So once she has it equipped, she'll walk over. And right there you see press X to breach fence. Uh, we were playing on a, with a controller build, but they assured us that eventually it would have mouse and keyboard support, of course. So yeah, check that out. Get a nice little torching going. But then, unfortunately, I think a passing convoy uh, got, a, got a wind of our, our uh, shenanigans, and I had to sort of help uh, incapacitate them. But as a result, of course, the S hit the F, and the people with inside of the base got wind of where we were and started just they just started bucking. So we try our best to, you know, do what we can do, clean up the area of enemies, and we're all working in sync here. Uh, one of our the other players that we were um, matched up with, uh, I think it was Vasily. He was a sniper, so we had tasked him uh, with taking out the snipers and the. Uh, 
the rocket launcher dudes on the roofs of, of the far side of the base because those guys those guys are going to be real trouble for us later on and you'll see here in a moment um because this is our very first time playing this game uh a series of unfortunate events happens and we get caught a couple times but um the shooting is is very much a ghost recon game it's a very ubisoft uh style of solid tactical you know very weighty uh, methodical movement you see here on my left I get a notification that someone rolled up on me and yeah we quickly took him out and we just kind of keep it moving so our objective here is to try to get into that one base where that circle was I told you earlier and um, help uh, extract our target so yeah, you see, I'm sort of like moving very quietly and st strategically <laughs> through the area here. Um, and what you'll see here soon is, uh, since we already sort of did our best to, to tag enemies within the base, they pop up as those little triangles. Also in the lower right hand corner of the screen, those little tiny orange Doritos, um, they'll notify us of where enemy positions are and those kind of red clouds also give us that information as well and this is uh me fumbling for a bit <laughs> trying to get to cover it did take a while to get I, i'll be honest with you i didn't i didn't play much of wildlands so it takes a while for me to get accustomed to jumping from third person to like first person like aim, aiming down sights type of deal but um yeah it's still it still feels really solid i mean you'll see here i get a, a couple of decent shots in and um yeah, as, as they sort of slowly start to funnel their way up the stairs, we all start to take position and uh, clear them out one by one. So we're all kind of a little scattered at this point, but we're still fairly close to one another, with the exception of uh, Vasily, um, who was kind of, honestly, uh, I don't know who that person was. I don't hold any ill will against them, but they were, I'm just going to tell you, they were a little bit of a wild card. Uh, <laughs> They put themselves out there and they got uh, they got downed a couple times and we had to try to do our best to go save them um, So as tactical as we had wanted to be unfortunately, we um, You know, we weren't quite the ghosts that we were Hoping we would be also to cap this footage, but I mean I had a pretty good time playing it um, It seems like a game that I could see myself getting into and it's interesting the kind of setting that they chose here And I'm actually kind of really into the story I mean you've seen clips of it on the trailer and they kind of laid out a very sort of brief explanation or synopsis of the trailer and um, I'm kind of into it. I like the idea of being hunted uh, by John Bernthal's character who used to be you know one of your brothers in arms fellow ghost so now he knows kind of how you operate and he knows your weaknesses and um, what's interesting too is this game in, uh, implements certain survival mechanics so you'll see that especially here I'm, I'm about to get torn up by this little um, this little robot uh, <laughs> It, uh, it's pretty nasty and we needed all four of us to really attack it at the same time. And I was, this was also really the first couple times I was throwing a grenade. So, I mean, I'm making excuses for myself, uh, no shame, but you have to actually equip healing items and then of course use them. But what's also interesting is you can get to a certain point uh, in your health if you get wounded enough that you'll start like bleeding out. So you have to actually equip a bandage and get to a safe area because it takes a really long time, like Monster Hunter style long time to um, actually like whip out the bandage, wrap up the part of your leg or whatever that's been hit. And you'll see it actually reflect in the character model too. So there was one point uh, later on in one of the, uh, the other missions that we weren't able to really show here because unfortunately we couldn't complete it because of a bug. Um, you, you, there was a moment where I was bleeding out. I had to like duck into cover, wrap up my leg. And then you saw the bandage, like the bloody bandage on my leg. Which I thought was kind of a cool touch. I kind of like seeing that actual thing show up, like those little game elements um, be represented by an actual, you know, on screen thing. So here I'm trying my, my, my best to lob a grenade. I almost got a piece of him there. Homie right here <laughs> shows up. And yeah, S hits the F real quick. What's cool is once you blow up enough of the grenades and stuff, you'll expose parts of the um, 
the, the, the drones and uh, you can start to obviously focus your fire on there. It's sort of, it's very like Destiny-esque, you know, like fighting these, um, these ro robotic things and uh, coordinating within your team. There, there was actually a moment early, later on in the play demo, we played for about an hour, um, where we had to fight this huge uh, drone and it was called the behemoth drone. I might drop in some footage here just because it was so cool. And um, so it was it was very much like Horizon Zero Dawn even, like if you had three buddies to play along with. And uh, it, it could only sort of operate within a certain uh, like fenced off area and you had to implement certain things like an EMP grenade and rocket launchers. But it felt really cool. It, it kind of actually like, I mean, bringing up Monster Hunter again, it kind of felt like Monster Hunter in a sense where you are coordinating with your, you know, your squad to take out more than just, you know, heavies and, and you know, soldiers in sort of conventional military gear it felt pretty cool actually and um so jumping back into the other mission that i was showing off earlier so now we got closer to where we need to be we're making our way towards the target and um i just like i just wanted to show this off because this is so pretty but uh yeah it, it, it definitely feels like a ghost recon game and that's good i think if you really enjoyed you know, like Wildlands, or if you want that sort of tactical, slow moving, methodical stuff, you know, without some of the problematic elements. Um, this is, this is, uh, this seems like the way to go. I'm, uh, to be honest with you, um, I, I went into this demo, uh, you know, pretty interested. Honestly, I wanted to give it a fair shake. And I, I do feel like I would probably wind up playing a large chunk of this game, assuming I could find, you know, a few buddies to party up with and play with on the regular. Um, and the other cool thing that I that we learned here, we're gonna cut, we're gonna skip a cutscene because they politely asked us not to show them. But um, the other cool thing is, uh, so here where we're just we're sabotaging uh, certain um, things here so that we can blow them up. And what's cool is here is like obviously uh, we have to split up. So two of us have to go to one end of the base and the other two have to go to the other. Uh, but since we kind of cleaned up, it, it didn't <laughs> prove to be much of a challenge. I'm sure if we were, gonna, if we were to be way more methodical and, and you know, just better, honest, honestly, we could have had more of a challenge and this would have been more intricate to have to clean up with. But um, what's cool is they, they told us that um, a lot of the progression carries over from the single player into the multiplayer and vice versa. So it's not like it's two different modes that are, you know, isolated from each other. They, you can sort of, uh, you know, if you unlock an ability in, say, single player, you can then use that ability in multiplayer. So um, there's an incentive there to just always kind of, you know, just find your rhythm, try new things, jump into multiplayer, jump into single player. It's not this just like thing hidden in the menu or, or some sort of event or whatever, which I thought was kind of cool actually. I, I would love to see some of that stuff implemented more seamlessly like that, um, especially for a game like this, which you know, in the final build will have more of an open map. So here we run into the wolves. Uh, th this is John Bernthal's boys. We, you know, we kind of do our best to clean up. See here, I get hit, hit a little bit, and you'll see what I was talking about earlier with the syringe. This is a quick little animation, not as long as the bandage one, obviously, but still, um, there is an incentive there to take cover, coordinate with your team, find moments where you're a little vulnerable and you, you, you need assistance, you need your team to watch your back and cover you while you are, you know, bandaging yourself up or getting a syringe out. Um, so here we're slowly making our way to the extraction area and um, yeah this was this was pretty much the end of the first mission and then we flew around and did a couple of other ones but so far I mean I, I had a pretty decent time with what I played um, it was nice sort of calling things out tagging enemies you know trying to be as tactical as we could we were a little better the, <laughs> the following missions I swear All right. um, but yeah this this, this was basically a, uh, and now we get a chance to see the the fruits of our labor there you go things go boom but yeah this was a quick look at uh ghost recon breakpoint um let us know what you think down below and if uh you know if you want us to check out some other stuff let us know too but yeah this has been paul for kotaku.com appreciate it peace y'all